Over the years, Docker has released two different ways of installing Docker on non-Linux systems. This lecture is going to compare both ways. And let's start off with the Docker Toolbox. Docker Toolbox is appropriately named because it's an installation tool that pulls together and configures a number of things so that macOS or Windows can run Docker. It installs the six following tools. Docker Community Edition or Enterprise Edition, Docker Compose, Docker Machine, VirtualBox, Docker Quick Start Terminal, and Kitematic. Let's start with the bottom three tools because they are specific to the Docker Toolbox. Since the Docker daemon requires Linux, and macOS and Windows are both not running Linux, you need some way to load up Linux within macOS and Windows. This is done by using VirtualBox. If you recall from a previous lecture, VirtualBox is a Type 2 hypervisor. It is open source and runs on all major platforms. Docker Toolbox will install and configure VirtualBox for you. Then it's going to use another tool called Docker Machine to create a virtual machine on your behalf. This virtual machine will be running a lightweight distribution of Linux. Docker Machine is part of the Docker ecosystem. It is a command line tool that helps you create servers and get Docker installed onto those servers. These servers could be running in a virtual machine on your laptop, but Docker Machine can also be used to create servers on various cloud hosting providers such as DigitalOcean and more. In the Docker Toolbox case, it creates a server with Docker Machine using VirtualBox as the adapter, and in turn, it creates a Linux-powered virtual machine using VirtualBox. Finally, it installs the Docker daemon within that VirtualBox and then configures a special terminal so that the Docker CLI client can connect to the remote Docker daemon. Got it? Good. Nah, I'm just kidding. That was one of the craziest sentences ever constructed by mankind. So let me clarify that with a diagram. Trust me, it's not as bad as it sounds. On the left hand side, we have Mac OS or Windows. The Docker CLI is installed along with Docker Compose and Docker Machine. When you want to use Docker, you open a special terminal called the Docker Quick Start Terminal. It will also be directly installed on Mac OS or Windows by the Docker Toolbox. It's a special terminal that when launched, it will automatically create a new server with Docker Machine if no server already exists. You can see that with the blue arrow on the bottom. It leads to that rectangle on the right side, which includes a virtual machine that has Docker installed on it. If you look at the black arrow in the middle, that handles the case where a machine already exists, in which case the Docker Quick Start Terminal will be automatically configured so that your Docker CLI tool knows how to connect to the remote Docker daemon. The XXX IP address will be whatever VirtualBox decides to issue out, because at the end of the day, it's just a server running on your local network. See, I told you it wasn't that bad. The next tool in the toolbox is Kitematic. Kitematic is a graphical tool that lets you manage your Docker images and containers. It's optional, and for some people, it could be seen as a nice to have application. Personally, I don't use it because I run Linux natively and find the command line tools to be more than sufficient. And that leads us to Docker CE or EE, which as you know by now, includes both the Docker daemon and Docker CLI. We covered both these things in a previous lecture and previous section. If you skipped around, definitely go back and check them out. We also briefly touched on what Docker machine was before, and that's about as much as we'll cover it in this course. For what this course covers, it's not important to do a deep dive. If you decide to install Docker with the Docker toolbox, then you'll learn the very basics on how to use it to manage your Docker installation. On the other hand, Docker Compose is an essential tool to learn and use. And if you take this course all the way until the end, you'll be a Docker Compose master. Now that you know what's going on with the Docker toolbox, we'll cover Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows. After that, I'll directly compare both with a pros and cons list, and you can decide which one to use. Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows are newer tools than the Docker toolbox. Moving forward, this will be the best way to install Docker on Mac OS or Windows. Unlike the Docker Toolbox, Docker for Mac and Windows does not install VirtualBox. 
Instead, it uses the Type 1 hypervisor that comes included with your operating system. For macOS, that would be HyperKit, and on Windows, that's Hyper-V. It installs Docker CE or EE, Docker Compose, and Docker Machine. From your Docker CLI's point of view, the Docker daemon will be running natively, so you don't need to deal with having to use or configure a special terminal. That sounds like a no-brainer decision, right? Well, not quite. Both installation methods have their own limitations and pros and cons. The first major thing that we need to cover is what your computer needs to run either or. To run Docker for Mac or Windows, you cannot have VirtualBox or VMware installed. If you do, you would have to uninstall them. This is a limitation of how Type 1 hypervisors work. You could get around this by modifying your OS's boot flags to toggle them, but that's not going to be worth the effort. So if you have legacy applications that require using Vagrant to spin up a VirtualBox-driven VM or anything like that, then chances are Docker for Mac or Windows is out of the question for you. For the Docker Toolbox, as expected, you cannot have HyperKit or Hyper-V already running with the Docker Toolbox. But if you use VMware, that's okay. There's no problem with running VirtualBox and VMware together because they are both Type 2 hypervisors. Another limitation for Docker for Mac is you need to be running Yosemite 1010 or later and have hardware from 2010 or newer. For Windows, you will need Windows 10 Professional, Enterprise, or the Student Edition. The Home Edition of Windows does not allow you to install Hyper-V, at least not at the time of recording this video. On the other hand, running the Docker Toolbox is much less demanding. For Mac OS, you can be running Mountain Lion 10.8 or later, and for Windows, you'll want Windows 7 or newer. Even the Home Edition of Windows is capable of running it. So now let's talk about usability concerns. With the Docker Toolbox, the Docker daemon is running on a remote host, which means it's no longer running on a special address called localhost. Instead, it will end up running on a local IP address on your network. With Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, you'll be able to access the Docker daemon on localhost just as if you were running Linux natively. If you take this course until the end, you'll see this difference come into play when we run a web application with Docker. I'm going to be able to access it at localhost because I'm running Docker natively on Linux. With the Docker Toolbox, you would have to go to 192.168.99.100 or whatever VirtualBox happened to give you as its local IP address. That was the XXX address earlier in this lecture when we went over the Docker Toolbox diagram. With Docker for Mac or Windows, you will be able to access it at localhost since from Docker's point of view, the Docker daemon is running natively. It's also worth noting that with the Docker Toolbox, you'll have to use the Docker Quick Start Terminal, whereas with Docker for Mac or Windows, you can use whatever terminal you want, even PowerShell. I also want to quickly mention that the Windows subsystem for Linux cannot run the Docker daemon natively as of yet. That's because certain Linux kernel features are not ported over. This may change in the future, but ultimately it depends on how far Microsoft wants to go with allowing Linux to be ran natively on Windows. Now let's talk about performance. In theory, Docker for Mac or Windows should run faster, but at the time of making this course, the opposite is true. The Docker team is trying very hard to improve performance, but at the same time, since it's a newer project, there's a priority to make sure everything is rock solid and well supported first. In both cases, you're going to end up mounting in files from your main OS into either a VirtualBox driven VM with the Docker Toolbox or the Type 1 hypervisor solution provided by your OS with Docker for Mac or Windows. What I mean by that is, the source code you'll be working with will be sitting on a drive on your main operating system. And then you'll be able to edit it with whatever your favorite code editor is. Then those files will be mounted in such a way that Docker can recognize them. That's all going to be handled for you through the Docker Toolbox or Docker for Mac or Windows. As of right now, VirtualBox is a bit better for raw performance in this case, but I wouldn't completely write off Docker for Mac or Windows just yet because Docker is improving performance on those platforms all the time. So, which one should you pick? My thought process is, using Docker natively will offer a much better user experience, so if your computer is capable of running Docker for Mac or Windows, I would start there.
Then I would continue using it until you run into performance issues. You may actually never run into those performance issues, which is why I recommend you try it first. Docker is improving performance all the time with these platforms. In the worst case scenario, you can just uninstall Docker for Mac or Windows and then set up the Docker toolbox later on. It's not a life or death decision. So that's it for this lecture. The next couple of lectures will be text-based and they will have installation notes for Docker for Mac, Docker for Windows, Docker Toolbox, and installing Docker on Linux natively. Please pick whatever method that's compatible with your system and make sure you read the instructions very carefully. Once you work through the installation notes on your own, we'll meet back up on video and we'll verify together that your installation of Docker is working. See you then.